Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Large vessels like aircraft carriers are engineered for the open sea. However, when they enter tight harbor spaces, they require assistance. Tugboats are employed for this task, pushing and pulling the ships to their designated berths, where they are then securely tied down using age-old techniques. One of the earliest methods for docking large ships was warping. This method involves securing the vessel to a heavy weight or a stationary point on shore and hauling it along with ropes and capstans. The first tugboats were powered by steam. Scottish engineer William Symington developed the first steam tug the Charlotte Dundas in 1802, which used a Watt steam engine and paddle wheels. Over time, tugboat technology has evolved, featuring more durable hulls, stronger engines, and advanced systems like azimuth thrusters for better handling. These reliable vessels are strong enough to maneuver 100,000-ton aircraft carriers to their moorings. While tugboats and warping have modernized, the act of mooring still depends on tying ships to docks using sturdy lines. One, two, three, heave! One, two, three, heave! Docking a Nimitz-class carrier requires flawless teamwork. Tugboats assist the massive ship as it nears the pier. The bosun and deckhands position fenders to shield the hull from contact. As the vessel closes in, hawser and mooring lines are readied and tossed to line handlers on shore. Mooring winches manage the slack in these lines. The pier's bollards and cleats are used to fasten the bow and stern lines, as well as breast and spring lines. These lines are systematically adjusted to maintain balance and tension. Once everything is secure, shore power cables are connected to supply electricity. The entire process relies on refined seamanship and meticulous coordination. As the aircraft carrier nears port, it transitions to harbor speed. The ship's bridge and port control work in tandem, with tugboats offering support. The deck department assigns crew members to mooring stations fitted with bits and capstans. The ship proceeds slowly toward the pier. Heaving lines are launched by the deck crew through equipment like fair leads and chocks. These connect to the thicker mooring lines or hawsers. Tugboats maintain their position while the mooring lines are secured to shore bollards. Winches and capstans tighten the lines for balanced tension. Once the ship is fully secured, adjustments are made to permit gangway deployment and commence shore operations. Yeah, 
Not all lines used in mooring are the same. Multiple mooring line types are essential for docking enormous vessels like a Nimitz-class carrier. Bow lines restrict forward movement and secure the ship's front, while stern lines prevent backward drift. Breast lines run directly from the ship to the dock to keep the vessel snug against the berth. Spring lines angle diagonally from the bow and stern, controlling forward and aft motion. Headlines are similar to bow lines, but are rigged further forward for extra hold. Likewise, aft lines, akin to stern lines but positioned further back, enhance stability. Each of these lines works to keep the vessel steady, especially under the pressure of tides and external forces. Before the carrier sets sail, its mooring lines must be released with care. Under the bosun's command, the deck crew prepares to detach the ship. Ongoing communication with port control and tugboats is crucial. Mooring winches begin to ease tension on the lines. Spring and breast lines are released first, followed by bow and stern lines. Each line is pulled in with precision using fair leads and capstans to prevent tangles. Dockside personnel help remove the lines from bollards. After all lines are retrieved, they are neatly coiled and stowed. Tugboats maintain the ship's position until it's fully unmoored, ensuring a smooth departure. To be safely docked, a Nimitz-class carrier's mooring lines must be tightly fastened to shore bollards and remain under consistent tension. Lines at the bow, stern, and midship stabilize the vessel in all conditions. Fenders minimize contact damage with the dock. After securing the lines, the crew performs a final inspection. Prior to departure, Mooring lines are secured aboard and neatly stowed. Tugboats then assist in guiding the ship away from the dock, while crew members take their positions along the rails. Although rare, anchors can be lost at sea. A notable incident occurred on the 26th of September, 2019, when Marines teamed up with Navy divers and military contractors to retrieve a lost anchor near White Beach in Okinawa, Japan. 
The missing anchor disrupted anchoring activities for weeks and significantly impacted port operations. Recovery efforts involved locating the anchor and coordinating with salvage contractors. These complex operations require skilled teams to conduct underwater searches, identify exact positions, and manage heavy lifting equipment. Because of the low visibility and potential hazards underwater, strict safety measures were enforced. Ultimately, the recovery mission succeeded, and the anchor was retrieved. Dock space at ports is often limited. In such scenarios, a method known as nesting is employed. Nesting involves mooring ships side by side, usually close to a dock or quay. This technique allows multiple vessels to use the same limited docking area. Commonly seen in busy ports or large naval missions, nesting requires precise maneuvering and expert coordination. Fenders protect the outer ship's hull, and gangways facilitate access between ships. Mooring lines are carefully monitored to maintain alignment and security. While this method maximizes space, it demands exceptional seamanship to ensure every vessel in the formation remains stable and ready. Even submarines can dock beside other vessels to receive supplies. An Ohio-class submarine, for instance, may moor alongside a tender with incredible precision. Tugboats help guide the submarine toward the tender. The deck crew sets up fenders to absorb potential contact. Mooring lines are passed from the submarine to the tender's crew, who secure them using bollards, cleats, capstans, and winches. Once docked, gangways or brows are installed for personnel movement. Supply lines are connected to transfer provisions, fuel, and equipment. Throughout the process, communication remains constant. Safety checks and protocols are strictly observed to ensure both vessels operate safely and efficiently. In narrow waterways and ports, moving large ships requires tugboat assistance. Tugboats are both powerful and precise, guiding massive warships within restricted harbors to achieve the complex maneuver of docking in tight, busy waterways challenges that have historically required great skill. Though built to dominate the sea with engines and weapons, battleships often lack the agility needed for confined port movements. That's where tugboats come in. Their excellent power-to-weight ratios make tugboats exceptionally agile. Even a warship, despite its strength, struggles with precise movements in tight spaces because of its size and inertia. Tugboats are designed for this exact purpose, often equipped with advanced propulsion systems that allow them to push, pull, and steer enormous ships with ease and control.
In bustling and cramped harbors, tugboats are essential for docking and undocking safely, particularly when a ship's mass and momentum limit its maneuverability. Tugboats come in various forms based on their duties, harbor, ocean-going, and river tugs. Ocean-going tugs, or sea tugs, are built to tow vessels over long distances and endure open sea conditions. A key example is the USS Tawasa, a 1,255-ton, 205-foot-long fleet tug that assisted in towing a nuclear depth charge during Operation Wigwam in 1955. Depending on the mission, these tugs use wire cables or synthetic ropes for towing. There are also specialized tugs like notch tugs and integrated tug barge ITB, units, which are designed to fit into barges for efficient pushing, especially on inland waterways. Harbor tugs are smaller but highly maneuverable, equipped with propulsion systems such as azimuth stern drives, ASD, or cycloidal drives, offering 360-degree movement for optimal positioning. Understanding how tugboats function is as important as knowing their types. When maneuvering a large ship, the first step involves surrounding it with tugboats to apply directional force. In towing scenarios, tugboats attach long, durable tow lines to a winching system on the large vessel. Winches allow line adjustments based on the distance and complexity of the maneuver. Tugboat engines provide the power to pull ships through narrow straits, busy ports, or tight canals places where large ships struggle to move alone. Their responsiveness and thrust capacity are key for navigating tight or chaotic environments. Tugboats, known as pushers, can place themselves at the stern or side of larger ships. With cushioned bows, they apply steady force to help guide the vessel. In recent years, tugboats have advanced with hybrid or dual-fuel engineism using LNG2, reduce fuel consumption, and improve environmental impact. These innovations combine speed, strength, and eco-efficiency, making tugboats indispensable for port operations involving the world's largest ships. From ancient warping methods to today's azimuth thrusters, the task of maneuvering gigantic ships has evolved dramatically. Though aircraft carriers, subs, and cargo vessels may command the oceans, it's the modest tugboat that reigns supreme in harbors. With its unmatched strength, agility, and control, the tugboat remains an unsung hero of modern maritime operations. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.